Outer Moon landing coming up very shortly. Can you tell us a little bit more about those future Clips flights, what we can look forward to and when? Sure. So part of what we're doing here, Nikki Fox mentioned earlier, we're helping learn more about the moon to prepare us for taking humans back. So we're flying an increasingly complex series of instruments to the moon and demonstrations of technology to help advance our capability prior to taking the humans there, to make it safer and, and more productive when they do get there. We'll see those missions scattered out fairly consistently over the next three to four years as our instruments are matured and put together and we take advantage of what we learned from these early missions. You heard a lot today about the instruments on this mission. We'll learn from those instruments and make adjustments to the instruments we fly in the future. And you'll see those spread out over the next two to three three years so that by the time we take humans back, we know a lot about the moon. That's cool. I'm very much looking forward to that. I mean, Chris, you know, thank you so much again for joining us here. Now, we'll send it back to our hostess, Danilifer and Bridget. Thank you both, and thank you, Chris, for guiding the entire CLIPS team since day one. I know it's an accomplishment, and I know that I am not alone as I express gratitude for your guidance and support over the years. We are all so grateful for you. Now we do have something exciting that we we've do. all been waiting for. Do you want to tease the audience a little bit more, or what well, do you we think? Well, we have that that lunar image ready. Do so we? Let's go ahead and share that with the with the team here. All right, you're seeing it here first. Look at that view. I'm feeling a little bit emotional, and I'm feeling over the moon. Now, when I look up at the moon from down here, I will always remember this exact moment and the fact that Blue Ghost Mission One is in the northeast region in Mare Crisium. What an incredible sight. Bridget, can you tell us what we're looking at right now? Yeah, so this will be one of those cameras on the lunar lander. We're looking at that lunar surface. So you can see the, the various features of that regolith, the crater, some rocks, and that vision navigation system did such a phenomenal job finding what looks like a relatively flat surface for us to land on. Uh, and then obviously you can see some portion of our lander in that image as well. Now, this is that low quality image we anticipated, but Firefly expects to share more imagery and insights at the upcoming news briefing. That's right. We'll get that X-band imagery and then we'll actually also be able to get that video from landing. Now, before we get ready to wrap, what else is next for Firefly, Bridget? In the coming weeks, Firefly is scheduled to launch Lockheed Martin's LM400 satellite on our next Alpha rocket. The Firefly team is also gearing up for our next mission to the moon in 2026. And that mission is part of another NASA CLISPS task order but this time we're going to utilize a two-stage spacecraft configuration with Firefly's Blue Ghost Lander with a stacked Elytra orbital vehicle to support operations in lunar orbit and on the far side of that moon. To learn more about the rest of Firefly's upcoming missions, you guys can always check out fireflyspace.com slash missions. And I know NASA has a lot coming down the pipeline too. What, what do y'all have in store for us? We do, we are busy. So CLIPS continues to be an example of how NASA is enabling commercial services at the moon to support long-term lunar exploration. We have more CLIPS deliveries that are planned through 2028 and the next CLIPS lunar landing is coming up. Intuitive Machines' IM2 mission is just days away to landing on the moon on March 6th at Mans, Mons Mouton, which is near the moon's south pole, which you can follow on all of our NASA channels. On top of the next moon landing, we also have a launch. We're launching two new NASA science missions together in the coming days. NASA's newest space telescope, SphereX, and its rideshare punch will lift off from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. Now, then after that, we do have the launch of Crew-10 to the International Space Station, which is targeting no earlier than March 12th, as well as the return of Crew-9 shortly after. And beyond that, there's Artemis-2, the first crewed mission of the Orion spacecraft and space launch system rocket, which is scheduled for no later than April 2026. Bridget, it's been a privilege to sit next to you as we go through this historic moment. And we are looking forward to that all important data that Blue Ghost will gather from the lunar surface. So thank you so much for joining us for this joint moon landing coverage of Firefly's Blue Ghost Mission 1, which delivered 10 NASA instruments to the northeast region of the near side of the moon. And that's going to be a wrap for us tonight. We are incredibly proud of what this team has accomplished today. We want to thank you all for joining us. Be sure to tune into the Joint Firefly and NASA press conference that's set to begin at 4.30 a.m. Central or 5.30 a.m. Eastern on NASA Plus and Firefly YouTube. 
We do plan to share our HD imagery we talked about and that descent video during that time. And we'll also provide more in-depth updates on the mission ahead.